The Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. We're going to start that up. They've got a brand new coach as well. Sonny Cumbie comes in. And postgame win expectancy last year should have been a four and eight team. They ended up three and nine. This was a team that had some close calls early with some pretty decent teams. Let's talk about what they lost. Bub means the wide receivers headed over to uh, Pittsburgh. Austin Kendall is gone. Uh, Marcus Williams, the running back, is out. Linebacker Trey Baldwin, cornerback Balin Buchanan. Uh, overall, this team was not. They weren't putrid. They were better than three and nine, I thought. But, eh, I mean, we'll see. Number 113 in returning production. That is not great. Uh, defense, though, does return 76. Uh, sorry, 60%. Uh, they're number 76 in the country in that. So, uh, looking at the offense, the new co offensive coordinators, Scott Parr and, uh, and Jake Brown. Jake Brown was an assistant with Sonny Cumbie at Texas Tech recently. And Scott Parr was the head coach at Navarro College. Both of these guys, I would imagine, will be as aggressive as Cumbie is. Uh, they like to throw the ball around. They like to play fast. Uh, the offensive line looks pretty strong. The wide receivers, Smoke Harris, Trey Harris, and the LSU transfer, Devontae Lee, look like they're going to fit Cumbie's offense really quickly. Uh, the question at quarterback, of course, does Downing or McNeil start? Uh, who knows? I think Downing is probably going to be the guy because he knows Cumbie's offense already. He came with him from Texas Tech. Uh, rushing success was putrid last year, number 115 in rushing success rate. Um, but when you look at the running back, Keon Henry Brooks, he could pop this year. Like, he certainly could be good. On defense, new D.C. is Scott Power. He was the D.C. at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, they were number one in the WAC in FCS in scoring defense, in total defense, in interceptions, and da 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 He likes to create havoc. He's uh, They're incredibly aggressive. That's going to be a theme for today's show, I feel like. Uh, they have to replace eight guys with 220-plus snaps, but uh, the aggressive defense there, remember Stephen F. Austin last year had 105 tackles for loss. They had 48 and a half sacks. Uh, it, his style, his scheme should fit the younger guys that they got, like the defensive end Clark, the linebacker Grubbs there, Defense is stronger than the offense here, um, but they were not very efficient last year, uh, especially against the pass. They were number 109 in passing success rate allowed, so that was definitely not good. They do have four guys in the secondary that have you know big-time experience. The question is, how good are they? Just because you return players doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get better. Uh, the top players here, uh, we talked about the wide receivers. Uh, Smoke Harris, you know, I brought in Devontae Lee uh, as one of my top players here. The safety, B.J. Williams. Uh, the linebacker, Tyler Grubbs. Um, defensive end, Deshaun Hall. Like Those guys are going to be really, really good. Uh, keys to the season. Is this an all-or-nothing team? Like They were really undisciplined last year. They went 2-5 and five in one-score games. Uh, and that included one-score losses to Mississippi State, SMU, and NC State. They lost by one to Mississippi State. They lost by two on a last-second Hail Mary, uh, which... How about this? A really long pass, not a Hail Mary, uh, to SMU. And then NC State, they only lost by a touchdown. Uh, the transfer quarterback downing at Texas Tech, like he he knows Cumbie's offense. The three wide receivers could all be big playmakers. It's super aggressive on offense and super aggressive on defense. The, this team is going to be a lot of fun to watch every single weekend. But when you look at overall roster strength, et cetera, uh, they're number 109 in roster strength. Just to put that in, in you know, in the same perspective with uh, with Florida International, FIU is number one hundred eight. Like Louisiana Tech's roster has has dropped significantly. Uh, looking at the schedule, I mean, I've got them at four and eight. Maybe I see them at five and seven. I don't think this is a bowl team, but they could certainly sneak up and beat some teams very early on for sure. They play at Missouri. They play Stephen F. Austin, they got at Clemson, and then at South Alabama before their bye week, which is the first weekend in October. They just got a rough run of it when it comes to uh, the Conference USA schedule. You know, obviously, probably going to lose to Missouri, probably going to lose to Clemson, and I've got them losing at South Alabama. On top of that, UTEP I don't think is a gimme at all. I think UTEP's pretty good this year. We'll talk about them here in just a minute. Uh, after that, at North Texas, like, I've got a, right, a win over Rice, FIU, and Middle Tennessee. But at UTSA, at Charlotte, and UAB to close out, this is rough. So, I've got them at 4-8. and eight. 
Uh, don't feel great about it. They could definitely be five and seven. Maybe maybe Sonny Cumbie finds a way to get this team bowling early, but I don't see it to start off with. I'll say that. I don't see it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you